Hi, my name is Jack Galida, and today I'll be talking about object permanence. Object permanence is described as the understanding that an object will continue to exist once it has been taken out of your eyesight or not picked up by any of your other senses. John Piaget was the first to study this, and he believes that it is one of the most important parts of an infant's psychology. This is said to emerge around the end of the sensory motor stage of Piaget's theory of cognitive development. The stage lasts from birth of the child until their second birthday. Through physical touch and just simply handling the object, the infant will learn that the object does not, that the object does exist when it is no longer sensed. Piaget lays out six stages for ob object permanence. First is the reflex schema stage, where the infant identifies the movements it can make in its own body. This lasts from the infant's birth until about one month of age. From one to four months of the infant's life, they'll endure the primary circular reaction stage. They begin to see objects and engage with them, whether it be reaching, with the, reaching for them or following them with their eyes. In four to eight months of the infant's life, they see the secondary circular reaction stage. Infants begin to use their vision to influence their actions. When they see an object that is peeking out from behind cover, they start to realize that the entirety of the object still exists. In eight to 12 months of the infant's life, they will see the coordination of secondary circular reactions. Here, infants can be tasked with retrieving items that they have seen been hidden. They will do this successfully. The next stage lasts up to six months and is from 12 to eight months of the infant's life and is the tertiary circular reaction stage. Here they can retrieve items when they have been hidden multiple times, which was a problem with the previous stage. From eight to 24 months is the invention of new means through mental combination stage. The child has become fully acquainted with object permanence. The child can create a mental image to help them problem solve and actively look under and behind objects which may be concealing the item, even if they are placed in a container. Piaget began his research in 1963 and he wanted to identify when a children developed object permanence. Piaget's method was to hide a toy under a blanket while the child was watching and observe if the child would search for the toy or not. If the child searched for the toy, then this would be direct evidence that a child has object permanence. He found that infants were able to look for the toy when they are around the age of eight months old. Piaget believed that children under this age were not searching for the toy because they didn't believe that, it, that the object existed when it was out of their senses. Bauer and Wishart, two other psychologists, also claimed that there, that there is evidence of object permanence from ages one to four months old. Their method was to place children in a room with objects, wait for them to reach for the toy, and then turn the lights out. They found the children when the lights were out and noticed that they searched for the toy up to 90 seconds after the lights had gone out and the child could no longer see what was in front of them. The criticism for this study is that children in the dark may search for the object by complete accident as they are unaware as to what is in front of them. The violation of expectation research by René Valerie-Jean also showed that infants are more likely to stare longer at objects that they have never seen before. Other criticism of Piaget is that it appears he is underestimating the ability of children. Infants may also not have the physical coordination to search for the toy. They also might not even be interested in searching for them. Now we'll be talk now we will talk about a recent study um, in the field of object permanence. 
Researchers in South Korea studied the effect that prematurity had on an infant when it came to object permanence in a 2017 study. They studied very low birth weight infants, which is a baby weighing less than 1,500 grams. All of these babies had been admitted into the neonatal intensive care unit of Hamyang University's College of Medicine. The researchers used eye tracking methods to study object permanence in 15 very low birth weight preterm infants and 10 term infants at a corrected age. The children were placed in a room with two monitors and an eye tracker. The stimuli would be displayed on one monitor, which was attached to the eye tracker. The other monitor was used for the researcher to control the session. The infant was seated in their parents' lap 60 centimeters away from the monitor. In a 10 minute time frame, they completed three tasks, which were all counterbalanced. In task one, a woman who appeared on the monitor initially hides a yogurt bottle under the table, and then she holds it up after one second, and then she holds it still for another three seconds. In task two, the woman in the video picks up the yogurt bottle, hides it under the left cup, and then switches the position of the right and left cups on the table. She says, where is the yummy yogurt bottle? Then, starting with the yogurt bottle under the left cup, she exchanges the position of the two cups. In task three, the woman in the video picks up the yogurt bottle. She starts by hiding the yogurt bottle under the left cup. A few seconds later, she hides it under the right cup. She says, I am hiding it again. There is no switching of the two cups, only a change in where the yogurt bottle is initially hidden. The eyes retract to see where the infant's, inten infant's attention was drawn in each of the three tasks. The results of this study showed that the very low birth weight preterm infants had lower scores than term infants during the eye tracking measures of object permanence. The very low birth weight preterm infants also had a shorter referential gaze than the term infants. The results finally showed that the length of the referential gaze of the very low birth weight preterm infants was significantly lower at 6 to 10 months than at 18 months. This could point to a delayed trajectory of attention development. The researchers concluded that very low birth weight preterm infants have varying attention capacities and object permanence developmental checkpoints than term infants at the corrected age of 6 to 10 months, meaning that the points at which I laid out um, initially of Piaget's studies, uh, these preterm infants could hit the checkpoints at varying times than what was uh, laid out. A further study on this topic could be researching children who are affected by color blindness and they could see how it affects their learning of object permanence and how they are able to reach the different checkpoints laid out by Piaget. Things that could be integrated into this study is bright and vibrant objects which uh, could be easier for children with colored eyesight to identify and that test for children who suffer from color blindness uh, may also have a difficult time identifying those objects as they are unaware of their vibrancy. It could also be interested, interesting to study if dark objects had any effect on the study as well as the color blind children could have um, similar results to the children with colored eyesight. Object permanence has always been fascinating to me in the way that it's a clearly visible sign of an infant's psychological development. Also interesting to think about how at one time, even you were unaware that an object continued to exist even when it was not sensed.
The study was also interesting as it makes me think of all the sorts of conditions that could affect one's achievement of object permanence, as it is rigorously mapped out process and all children may not be achieving the same timely checkpoints as, as, as others. Thank you for listening to me talk about object permanence.